All right, trickies and trickers, it's time for the final episode of Read the Day, which is Our Man Bashir. A glass screen shatters as a man with a patch over one eye is hurled backwards through it. On the other side of the screen, Dr. Bashir stands casually, dressed in a tuxedo, walks back towards his female companion, Caprice. She smiles as she hands him a bottle of champagne, but, she's, but she has a troubled look on her face. Bashir looks at the bottle and sees the reflection of her man, who has gone up and is attempting to sneak up on him. With nothing else to use for a weapon, Bashir turns around quickly and uncorks the bottle. He uses the cork as a projectile to render the other man unconscious. He turns to Caprice and the two embrace, but they interrupt it by clapping from elsewhere in the room. It is Liam Garrick, who is broken into Hollow Suite because he is curious to know what Bashir is doing. Garrick knows that Bashir has been visiting Hollow Suite repeatedly ever since he received his new Hollow program, and yet the doctor has not told anyone what the program is. Despite Bashir's protests, Garrick uses his usual charm and tactfulness to convince the doctor to allow him to stay in, to allow him to stay and observe. However, he knows that Bashir's companion has just left. The doctor is obviously not amused, but Garrick assures him they will have a wonderful time together. Garrick then tells Bashir, After all, what could possibly go wrong? As Garrick and Bashir enter the doctor's official, par- official apartment in Kowloon, part of Hong Kong, Garrick takes in the decor of 1964 Earth, where they're joined by Bashir's valet, Mona Love said. She reveals that behind one of Bashir's walls is a assortment of firearms between this and the lavish surroundings. Garrick surmises that Bashir is playing some kind of rich playboy. On the contrary, Bashir says, he is a spy, a top-class secret agent whose clothing, equipment, lodgings, and adoring female companions are all provided to him by a grateful government. Garrick remarks rarely that he, who really has been a spy, wants to join the wrong intelligence service. Meanwhile, Cisco, Kira, Worf, Dax, and Miles O'Brien return from a conference on to discover that their runabout has been sabotaged. The Orsis of Renoko is about to explode, so Eddington beams them out. Unfortunately, the explosion comes during the transport, and as the crew materializes, a bright flash forces the station crew to avert their eyes. Only smoke remains, and Eddington is stunned. Eddington rushes down to the pit and ops to evaluate the next move, and Odo arrives to understand what's going on. The primary engineering coils were overloaded, but the crew members' patterns are still stuck in the transporter buffer. Given the immense amount of space required to store, ne- store neural information, and the fact that the buffer will soon lose coherence and the signatures with it, Anton orders the computer to wipe all memory necessary in order to save the patterns. Consequently, all participation goes out while the crew members are somewhere on the station, and the Odo have no idea exactly where they are. At the same time, in the hall suite, which is selected despite the power loss, Mona dresses Garrick in appropriate attire for the 1960s. But shortly thereafter, the bar in Bashir's apartment turns itself 180 degrees to reveal a bed with scantily clad Major Kira in it. Bashir thinks Kira and Garrick have conspired to ridicule him, but Garrick's just as surprised as he is. Speaking with a thick, r- thick Russian accent, Kira identifies herself as Colonel Anastasia Komanov, and so Bashir and Garrick realize the image of Komanov character from Bashir's hollow novel has been replaced with one of Kira. However, the career claims the parameters for the character are normal and refuses to pause the program. Bashir contacts Ops to find out what, is, to find out what has happened. But as Ed King explains about the transport accident, Odo recognizes Kira's voice and realizes the images of the missing crew members have been stored in Hall Suite's memory. Odo and Eddington warn him not to stop the whole program or call the exit. As a minor result, they lost the images, and thus the crew. Komanov explains the mission she and Bashir are supposed to be working on. A number of unusual earthquakes have occurred of late, and the government has concluded that the, that the quakes are artificial. When Garrett begins to explain that it is not difficult to manufacture such a quake, Bashir silences him, given the period they are supposed to be in. The assignment is to find out who is causing the quakes, and the only clue is the recent kidnapping of someone named Professor Honeybear, a leading seismologist. When Komanov shows a picture Shows Bashir a picture of the professor, it's in fact Dax. Bashir communicates to Garrick that they need to ensure the honey bear stays alive as if she dies, the computer will remove her from the program and intentionally erase Dax's pattern. Kamanov is about to explain further when the door opens to reveal Mona, who collapses with a knife in her back. She's followed by O'Brien, who is now Falcon, the man with the patch whom Bashir knocked out previously, and two other armed men. Komanov asks Falcon for a last kiss with Bashir, and Falcon accepts. As they kiss, she tells Bashir to remove her earring, 
It's a bomb. He does so, and the bomb knocks out Falcon. Garrick, Bashir, and Komonov proceed to knock out Falcon's henchmen. Komonov nearly kills O'Brien, but Bashir stops her from doing so. This makes Komonov question his motives, as Falcon has been trying to kill Bashir for nine years. Bashir notices that Garrick's mouth is bleeding after the fight, and he realizes that the safety mechanisms on the hollow suite have been disabled. And that in addition to keeping the crew, by a crew member's parents alive in the story, Garrick and Bashir must take care to protect their own lives as well. Komonov then proceeds with the mission. She knows that Hippocrate Snow has been kidnapping the world's best minds for the past six months, and that he had met one, and that he had met each one at a club in Paris. Komonov, Bashir, and Garrick set out to visit the club. Meanwhile, Odo and Eddington go to the Hollow Suite with Quark and Rom to determine the nature of the crew's in integration. Rom has made significant modifications, but Eddington is able to confirm the crew's physical patterns. However, the neural energy cannot be stored there. Quark supposes multiple other systems on the station have been used to do that, as requires an, an immense amount of energy. In the club, Joe first finds the chumps, and was a strike a similarity to Worf. Bashir claims that he is one of the world's leading geologists and inquires about Dr. Noah and the scientists. Jaham says he can arrange a meeting, willing for five million francs. Bashir requires a game of cards to win the money from him. Meanwhile, Odo and Ops reveals that a Cardassian separatist group is responsible for the destruction of the Orinoco. Anton notices that the neural patterns of all five officers are stored in the rest of the computer memory. So I to use the Defiant to reassemble the neural and physical patterns of the five victims. The Rom says he needs to he needs to modify the system interface with the ship. Meanwhile, Bashir has won the money in a game of Baccarat and has to meet with Dr. Noah. The champ knocks the trio out with a puff of toxic cigar smoke. When they awaken, a man is ready for them. He introduces himself as Hippocrate Noah, who looks exactly like Benjamin Sisko. Bashir then notices they're they Bashir then notices that the room they are in is atop Mount Everest. Dr. Noah decides to test Bashir's geological knowledge by showing him one of his artifacts. When Bashir identifies the various stones, Noah then announces his plan, also revealing a hidden control panel and Professor Bear with Dax's appearance. He reveals that he has placed massive underground lasers in strategic positions, but that he plans to activate them all at once, shrinking the earth, killing all of its inhabitants, and forcing the oceans to cover the entire globe, except the highest point on Earth, this complex on Mount Everest. He then announces that Bashir won't be joining him and calls for Falcon, who has just been employed by him. On the Defiant, Rom has successfully managed to complete the modifications so the Hollow Suite's interface with the Defiant transporters, but it'll take at least another hour. Falcon instructs Bashir and Garrick to win the giant lasers, but says Komonov will be used as breeding stock for the second human race. Dr. Noah activates the countdown sequence and leaves. Once he is gone, Garrick almost ends the program. But Bashir, but Bashir stops him. Finally, Honey Bear shows up, and Bashir charms her into coming close enough so they can steal the key, like, steal the key to their restraints, freeing himself and Garrick. Bashir announces that they have to get back to the control room. According to, to the program storyline, one of the two female leads, Anastasia slash Kira or Honey slash Jadzia, is supposed to end up with the hero, while the other one dies. They have to prevent them happening to either of them. Garrick objects, saying that the odds are against them and it's time to quit. Bashir is appalled, and an argument ensues. Garrick says that Bashir was a real spy and overgrown child play acting as one. Garrick said there are times when it's better to save oneself than risk one's life against impossible odds. Garrick starts to address the computer, but Bashir aims his backup gun at him. Remind him that he calls for the exit. He may start the program and kill Sisko and the others. Garrick tells Bashir to face reality. He is not a hero. He only likes to pretend to be one, but Joey doesn't have the guts to pull the trigger. Garrick starts to go over the exit again, and Bashir pulls the trigger. Garrick goes down with a flesh wound in his neck. Taken aback, he says that Bashir came awfully close to killing him. Bashir coolly asks him, What makes you think I wasn't trying? Impressed, Garrick voices no further objections as Bashir leads him back to the control room. Bashir and Garrick hold no one's henchmen at gunpoint until Duchamps arrives and disarms them. However, Julian receives a calm signal from Eddington. It's going to try to, it's going to try rematerializing the patterns in about two minutes. After hearing the signal, Noah decides to kill Bashir. However, Bashir pretends to surrender, believing that Noah has the right idea after all. Noah does not believe a word of it, but Bashir gives a lengthy speech, imitating the conversation that he and Garrick had earlier. 
Noah's still not convinced, so be sure then does the unthinkable. He activates Noah's machine, destroying all life on the holographic Earth. Noah's stunned and unsure what to do next. The program obviously didn't have a script that, that allowed his plan to actually succeed. Citing, to show his uncertainty, the able to kill Bridger anyway, he starts to aim his gun. Barom activates the transport, rematerializes Cisco, Sisko, Kira O'Brien, Worf, and Dax. O'Brien is to pull to Rom's messy modifications to the Defiant, now knowing that they saved his life. Back in the Hall Suite, Kira congratulates Bashir on his ingenious solution, saving the day by destroying the world. The Cardassian has gained a new respect for his human friend, and proposes that they meet again in, in the inside the program, Bashir's apartment in Hong Kong for their next lunch meeting. Hmm, nice. So anyway, let's take a look at some continuity surrounding this episode. The, the fifth season episode, A Simple Investigation, indicated that Bashir continued to enjoy the Julian Bashir Secret Agent series of Hollow novels. By the time of investigation, however, Bashir had involved other members of the senior staff in his fandom. In that episode, various members of the senior staff are shown to be volunteering to play various roles in Felix's follow-ups to the adventures seen in Armand Bashir. However, O'Brien is less enthusiastic about having to play Falcon again. Also, Bashir may have re re redesigned Komanov to look exactly like Kira, as Vicka mentions in his way that he took Kira's image from Bashir's secret agent program. Komanov's confusion over Kira's name was his Nerys Kira. It's one of the few instances in which the issue of Bajoran name order is addressed. Realized in the series, many fans are just as oblivious as Komanov to the fact that Bajoran's surnames comes, comes first, as was first clarified in progress. Although it had been established in Instant Row prior to Disney's premiere, prior to Disney's premiere, the name order is similar to Chinese and Hungarian names rendered in English, and thus although Kira's name was Kieran Reese, Kira is the major surname. Mid Rom's modification to the Hall Suite systems, he mentions spatula, and one of the pieces that can clearly be seen is a pot strainer, another kitchen utensil. The true way is mentioned for the first time in this episode. 47 appears, reversed, as Dr. Noah mentions he has 74 lasers to play around the world. Herrick Lofton does not appear in this episode. This episode is on the same day as the Voyager episode Resistance, which is also directed by, Win by Winrich Colby. Hmm. So, well, this episode is pretty darn good, and yeah, there are a whole lot of James Bond homages as well, but I'm not going to address all of them because well, that would take a really long time, so yeah. <laughs> so, overall, I give. Armand Bashir, four warp cores out of five. Well, anyway, tune in on Friday as we take a look at the next episode, Homefront. So, until then, live long and prosper, everybody.